welcome friends, family, and faculty to the commencement of the graduation ceremonies. But most importantly, I want to welcome and congratulate the class of 2006. <laughs> Disastrous 
loss of a friend. We've walked away with something because of these experiences as well. Stress, sleep deprivation, caffeination, procrastination, brain pain, even as manure helps fertilize plants. In the same way, these challenges were vital to our growth as students, friends, siblings, and individuals. These trials and triumphs have built us up and watered our souls and made us who we are now. If you pay close attention to the things I listed, you will see that we are behind these experiences, trials, and triumphs that we go through. We have helped make, each other, make up one another. We are the ones who water each other and the world. So remember this, it doesn't take much to water this place. Even the small things, like a simple hello, word of encouragement, or a bright smile, can give vital water to someone's parched soul and help them grow. So as we leave, let's remember not just to stop and smell the flowers, but to water them as well. We close this chapter of our lives now, and as we mark this milestone, take one last look around you at the people who are graduating with you today. High school is romanticized for good reason. This place is unique. It is the very last place where the nurses are with the engineers, the teachers with the actors, the astronauts with the firefighters, the police with the carpenters. It's the last place where everyone is together. Everyone from all parts of like the kaleidoscope of mismatched pieces, together we make a dazzling picture. And however high school has moved us, shaken us, and forced change upon us, put us together, and we are a complete picture. We are the ardent youth of today. Our class is an eclectic mix of people with a myriad of interests, passions, and dreams. And we've proven and we will prove again that we've got both the dream and the drive. So let's never lose the hunger inside that makes us come alive. <coughs> As noted author Joe Bailey states, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And go do that, because what the world needs is people who have come alive. <coughs> Class of 2006, I challenge you to come alive.
accurately describe the Kumtil High experience. As I sat on the bus that night, heading back to this very campus, I realized that high school was indeed the roller coaster event. It had us, the class of 2006, laughing in pure enjoyment at times, and silence and fearing others. It had us speeding through the joyous times with parents, peers, and teachers, and had us crawling up the ramps of social troubles, grade drops, and relationship slumps. Yet, like all roller coaster rides, this one came to a happy ending with all of its riders urging for another ride and braced for future excitement. Stepping off the bus and setting foot onto a campus that I often felt I knew too well, I reached another realization. I realized that our experiences here at Kutino High were indeed a segment in the road of life. And that for the past four years, we've all been traveling. As a class, meeting new people along the way and learning new things with each set. We walked, we walked past the pleasant hills of freshman year, learning while sightseeing high school environment. We trotted through the great plains of sophomore year, preparing ourselves for the rocky climb of junior year. And as we passed all three locations, we set off on a cruise through the beautiful beach of senior year, watching graduation rise up slowly across the horizon. Finally, just a few nights ago, as I flipped through my yearbooks and looked through all the pictures taken throughout the past four years, I was left with the very thought that I had despised for so long. The thought of a chapter in our lives coming to an end and a new one about to begin. For the past four years, we've all been authors, authors of each other's chapters, helping to shape each other's plots and outcomes. With a new chapter about to begin as our castles are paused in a few days, I wish to communicate my final revelation. That despite our pending emergence into the real world, we all share a common set of experiences. The experiences of Kurukino High. We are not stepping into the world of unknown. We are simply stepping into the effects of each other's literary talents. With that, I wish all my co-authors a safe and joyful ride to the next stage of life. Thank you.
softball, and badminton. Looking back, it is obvious that your spirit has seeped into the culture of CHS and made it a better place to be. As we look towards the future and what is in store for the class of 2006, we know that your spirit and achievement will take you far. We feel fortunate to have had the opportunity to watch you grow, and we know that we have learned as much from you as you have from us. As you step through the door of tomorrow, the learning will not be over, for true success in this vast world will require the same persistence and curiosity that brought you through the Cupertino community. Remain curious as to what lies around the next corner, for you never know when opportunity it is the commitment to lifelong learning that will bring you to doing something great and profound. And we say to you, congratulations to the class of 2006. Well, hello, I'm Jason Kretzler, assistant principal. And I'd like to thank you for this honor of speaking to uh, speaking today, Dr. And I'd like to thank all the parents and family and friends and the staff members who are here today, but especially the class of 2006. I came here before Principal Mott's open, but I do feel like I've spent all four years together with you. Some of you in my office probably felt like the whole four years. <laughs> First, I'd like to let you know that you are entering a world far more divided than the one I entered uh, upon graduating from high school. Not only is our nation in conflict with other nations, but many of you are in conflict in your own states, your own homes, even your own neighborhoods. You will leave high school and be further bombarded with campaigns to choose our side, their side, the one and only side. You will be pushed to be left or right, conservative or liberal, uh, red or blue. Both sides are staffed with clever and able manipulators of information, statistics, and opinions, making your continued search for knowledge and experience more important than ever before. For the truth lies quietly in the cracks and crevices, those in-between places in these massive walls of misinformation. I ask you to question and dig, and let your heart have an equal voice. Don't be trapped by blind trust, groupthink, or anger, for these are the friends of ignorance, hatred, and intolerance. It has been said that wisdom is knowledge gained through experience, so I'd like to part with a little bit of knowledge I have and the experiences I've had in the last four years. First, slow down. Try to enjoy the little bits of beauty that are available to all of us. The laughter of your friends, a day at the beach, a first kiss, a cool breeze in a hot church, your iPod, <laughs> loaded with your favorite tunes. Fight the urge to always go faster, do more, or buy the most. If you are never happy with what you have, you will never have enough to be happy. Love your parents despite their faults. They have loved you despite yours. <laughs> you will appreciate them far more when you have children of your own. Travel. It's not too hard, it's not too expensive, but it's far too important. It does two great things. It teaches you about others, and it teaches you about yourself. So save a little money, throw a dart in a map, and just go. Make happiness your life's goal, not wealth or fame. You can find happiness as a mother or a father, a lawyer or a gardener, or alone or with others. Most of you will not blaze a new path or take one less travel. But if you walk the path with, path with kindness and curiosity, you shall stray from it when opportunities arise, you will stop when others are in need, and you will seek out all the wonderful places it may lead you. Very few of us will do one great thing to distinguish ourselves, nor shall we define ourselves by one magic moment. Rather, it's the little things done well and done often that will set you apart and determine your success. Now, I will end with a little bit of wisdom from someone far wiser than myself as he was able to capture everything I could not say in my speech in just a few short lines. Ralph Waldo Emerson, for Miss Coy. <laughs> to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has been breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Now I'd like to introduce the president of the ASB president, Sid Wong.
the Associated Student Body President, and on behalf of the graduating class of 2006, I would like to thank Principal Mr. Kerry Matsuoka, as well as the Cupertino High School faculty. Our class would like to especially thank you for all of your time and efforts in helping us get to this very point. Along with that, we would also like to thank the Cupertino High School PTA for their hard work over the years and for making this event today possible. Last, but certainly not least, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today as we embark on our lives ahead. On that final note, there will be a reception sponsored by the PTA held right outside of the church on the lawn. Please join us as we begin the celebration. Thank you again and have a wonderful evening. Oh, my business 